What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode six of Health Talk Radio. I am here with my co-host, Paul Burgess. Paul, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm good, mate. How are you? <laughs> I'm awesome. Sorry, I'm running a little bit late as always. You know, uh, for the people that are listening, we've we've covered some ground and today we're going to go a bit controversial. So I sent a message to Paul ooh, a few days ago. I said, Paul, I need something really controversial. And he said, how about your training is shortening your life? I'm like, what? What do you mean? We're doing, we're training to lengthen our life. We're we're strengthening, uh, we're we're training for for all of the benefits, right? Cardiovascular health, um, you know, uh, muscle, like all of it. And you're saying that it's actually shortening your life. And so we're gonna dig into training. Uh, we're gonna talk about training, the right kind of training to do. And um, I'm excited to to hear your story on this because I I don't know if I agree. I don't know if I agree. You're gonna have to convince me, Paul. Yeah, and, and I'm sure many people won't agree. And um, that's why it's controversial, right? Because if everyone agreed, then we'd have finished the show and be good. But the <laughs> I think this is just my opinion, right? And yeah. um, my opinion has come from decades of experience in health and fitness and health in general and functional medicine and, and all sorts of things. And some of the stuff we talk about here doesn't even scratch the surface as to what I do really and the depths in which I go. So this is all very top line, right? And this is something that I've come to realize probably in the last year because I, I started going to the gym and lifting weights at 15 years old. Mm -hmm. That was 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So you're 50, you're 55, you're 55 now. Yeah. If you guys listen, for those of you that are listening, go to our YouTube channel and look at this guy because you do not. I, I mean, like, dude, you do not look 55. I, I mean, like, come on, man. Which is great. Right. And happy days. But the but yeah, so 40 years of clanging and banging. Right. Effectively is what right. I say. CrossFit. I, when you were here, we did a CrossFit workout. So are you are you not doing CrossFit anymore? No, I haven't done CrossFit uh -oh. for a good couple of years. I haven't wow. touched any weights. I haven't touched any weights for about a year. Really? Yeah. Um, but we'll talk about it because there's a reason. Well, yeah, we, we we will. But here's what I love about you. What I love about you is that, number one, you don't look 55. So you must know something because you're following. You practice what you preach. No question about it. And I was, you know, you're like training is shortening your life. I, I'm like, well, this guy does CrossFit. What do you mean training is shortening your life? Why the hell are you doing CrossFit but telling me this? But you stopped. Yeah, Interesting. absolutely stopped. Yeah. Because when you realize things are you know, detrimental or they're, they're more destructive than constructive, you, you stop, right? You know that if if you're smoking and then you realize actually smoking kills you, yeah, hopefully then you stop or whatever it is you're doing, right? And so, and also as we get older, and I'll put my hand up to one of the people that are getting older, um, your priorities change and you realize actually there is an end point and it is coming and so you want to extend it as far as possible. Sure, and, all of, sure. and all of a sudden, some of the motivators behind why you were doing certain things change. I'm not overly fussed about how I look in the mirror or, you know, the, the abs and all the rest of it. If that is detrimental to me living a longer life. Sure. Uh, let me just say this too, as I'm, as, yeah, as I'm looking at you too, right? Like I can't help, but there's no bags under your eyes. Your skin's very, very clear. Your complexion is good, right? So, and there's something to be said about that because we're looking at, I'm not going to mention any names, but there's some high flyers who say, you know, sleep when you die um, and and who are just looking rough out there who are obviously not taking care of themselves. Yeah, well. Listen, you can see it in their face. You can see it in their face. Uh, of course, most, most um, highly successful entrepreneurs that we see on social media don't look that great because you can't be healthy working 18 hours a day. It, it's just not a doable thing. Mm -hmm. That's why there are so few of them. Unfortunately, they're held up as the goal. So people try and copy and do that. Um, but it all comes down with a bang because you don't make the money because you're very ineffective if you're working 18 hours a day, unless you sure. are 
unless you're Elon Musk or someone like that who's very, very highly intellectual and has a very savant kind of mindset on things, which is unusual yeah. to others. Right? Yeah. The majority of people are not going to go and you know, send people to Mars and reinvent the electric car. So, and, and actually... I love, yeah. I'm a big he, fan he, of Elon Musk. He, he, he's an amazing engineer, right? And, and his vision yeah. um, is, is insane. For, to to the normal person, but there's a lot of people out there um, that promote this thing about work 18 hours, 20 hours a day. You know, you don't need so much sleep. You can get away with less sleep. All the rest of it. <clears throat> and the truth of the matter is, you can't get away with less sleep. So so really quickly, and I and I want to get to topic because I know we're off on a little tangent here. But really quickly, like, is there an age? So like. Right, like when I was twenty, I needed less sleep than I than I need now. Right, I'm 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 forty. I turned forty in November, and so is there a is there a cutoff point where you're like, hey, like sleep becomes more important at a specific age, like twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty two, in your experience? Well, we need it when we're young. Okay, when we're very young, baby sleep an awful lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. 15, 20 yep. hours a day. Yeah, right? and then as we get older, we drop that daytime nap thing. Right. And we as kids run around and we've got loads of energy and everything's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Then when you get to teenage, older teenage years, you'll you'll notice and you'll see this with your kids as they grow up. The getting up early in the morning stops and all of a sudden you can't get them out of it. Yeah, true. I, I, I've got a nine year old right now. She's going on 10 and it's starting to happen. <laughs> So Karina's ahead of her time. She always has been though, right? She's been always been really clever and, and kind of ahead of her yeah, ahead sure. of her time, Both right? So, yeah. but but the fact is, there is a biological change that m makes us sleep longer at certain parts of our development, and then we get into the normal world of work and you know or university or whatever else it is, and then our lifestyle becomes a big factor. So we stay up late because we want to party and do whatever it is we want to do. You know, we lie in because we want to, we, we were out so late last night, whatever else it is. Sure. And sure. then our, our lifestyle choices start to hinder our long-term health. So we eat worse, we drink alcohol, we take drugs, we don't sleep, we, we're stressed out. We've got all this other stuff that, that is all part of growing up, right? And that then accumulates more and more problems within our metabolism and inflammation and all the other things that make us all of a sudden go, I'm just tired all the time. Well, I used to be great when I was in my twenties and now I just, oh man, I just feel so tired or I can never get out of bed anymore or I can never sleep anymore. How does this work? I'm tired all the time, but I can't sleep. Right. Mm. You really got it broken. Mm. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's a real yeah. common thing. Okay, I'm always tired. I can never get a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. I think we got to do a podcast on sleep next week. <laughs> yeah, we can. But but the, the the fact of the matter is, as we grow older, you know, some of the some of the choices we make because we're so it's not going to happen to me. I'm unbreakable as a teenager <laughs> or as a young t uh, twenty year old. That those things do pay a price later on, and then as that accumulates over time, we accumulate this toxicity and this almost um, blocking up of the mitochondrial pathways, which is where the energy is produced. And we just become more and more tired. And, you know, we, we all of a sudden need to take our foot off the gas a bit, or I can't, I'll go out for a drink and now it takes me three days to get over it. Whereas before I could get up and go to work the next day. Right? True story. That is truth. I remember when I was 20, I would drink 20. I would drink Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday, fun day. I'd be ready to rock. Now, if I have three drinks, I'm a mess the next morning, unless I take emergency detox, subtle plug. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should talk about your products one day uh, that you saw because they're, they're, they've all got value, right? And they've got to be used in the right way. But people, yep. people will use them as a Band-Aid and not as something that they can use as a preventative and, sure, and there's a sure. big there's a big difference to that but anyway so you know when we was 20s we could do this and then now it takes me three days and all this kind of all this kind of stuff um and so sleep is paramount throughout our life it's just that we choose to to not prioritize it <clears throat> excuse sure. me then 
we get to a point where we realize actually my bloods are telling me I've got massive oxidative stress. My cholesterol's high. My liver's not functioning well. My blood glucose is all out of whack. And I've got all other problems and I'm stressed out of my mind and my body is stressed and I've got bags under my eyes and I look old before my time, et cetera, et cetera. And then the first thing I say to you is, how's your sleep? Oh, it's, it's awful. Okay. That's the first thing we need to do is get that right. And so get your sleep right. And all of a sudden you're having a focused block of time every day for your body to recover and repair. Mm -hmm. Right. It has to be there. If it's not there, what, when, when do you think that's going to happen? Also have a think of this. When you go to bed, and if you're saying you're going to do eight hours of sleep, that's the same as a working day. That's the same as getting to your desk at nine o'clock. And then all the time you spend there, all morning, lunchtime, all afternoon, going to five o'clock, that's the same as how long you're trying to sleep. But we don't see it as that. We don't see it as, oh, my God, I'm going to spend... If I said, you won't fly to Europe because the flight's too long. Right? True story. <laughs> yeah, you know me well. <laughs> and, and the flight is like 10 hours. Sure. So, so you could have a 10 hour sleep easy, right? I'm not yeah, saying you should yeah. sleep on the plane, but what I'm saying is it's no different to the amount of time you spend sleeping. That's why it's so important to prioritize that you need to get that much sleep a day. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not doing it, you're not going to repair and do all these things. I can't remember even why we got into sleep, but the fact of the matter is you need it for longevity. Well, but doesn't, but, but doesn't sleep become even more important if you're training hard in that repairing process, that rebuilding process? But you're saying, so at what, at what point though, right? Because the doctor tells us that some exercise is good. You're saying that training can shorten our life. And so how does this all tie in? Yeah. Okay. So I think in general, we should change the word exercise for activity. Mm -hmm. because as humans, <clears throat> we are built to be active. And that means we need to have mobility. We need to be um, strong and we need to have cardiovascular fitness. Yep. Just in general, right? We need just, just to be healthy and fit. We need those things. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, so what happened in the 80s, like, okay, I was around in the 70s. I was around in the 60s. In the 70s, there was no exercise stuff going on, right? Unless you were at school and you did your, your school lesson, the, the games or PE lessons, right? You, uh -huh. There was none of this walking down the street or jogging and, and, and all this kind of jazz. That didn't happen. Never mind having um, training shoes, like sneakers, and, and wearing them outdoors, in the street, are you crazy? Right, that wouldn't it wouldn't it wasn't a thing. So after the 70s, we got into the 80s, the new era. I remember it. I remember January the 1st, 1980, and I remember the commercials on TV promoting this new age, this new dawn of technology, and we we're all going to be so amazing and blah, 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 right. Yeah. And um there was this uh, American woman called Jane Fonda. Who oh, I remember Jane Fonda, yeah, yeah. So I was born in 81. I was, I was, I'm an 81 baby. I remember Jane Fonda. Yeah. And so she was the beginning of that wave of yep. just being aware that exercise is good for you. Right. Okay. So the okay. awareness yep. of the health movement started <laughs> and she'd sit there and she, and, and, and back then it was a, uh, a video, right? A VHS tape. Yeah, I remember like she, I think she did the Thigh Master. She was doing the, the commercials for the Thigh Master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All, yeah, yeah. all of this yep. stuff, right? Yep. But it was just it was this big new thing about health awareness mm -hmm. and you've got to do these things and you've got to be proactive. And all of a sudden you've got people wearing tracksuits as a fashion thing, right? Whereas before mm -hmm. it was a shirt and tie. <laughs> yeah, that's really right? yeah. yeah. And yeah. all of a sudden you've got the tracksuits being worn outside and things became much more leisure focused, right? And uh -huh. Um, so Jane Fonda, and then you had some other guys doing their little bit of thing. And, and then the other extreme was Schwarzenegger and that crowd who were doing the massive bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And so yep. as time went on, people were looking to progress this health industry because clearly there was a lot of money in it. Uh huh. And so we began to start looking at other forms of exercise and health clubs and gyms started opening and like, yeah, well, if you think that's good, come and do this, right? Oh yeah. There's a new one every day. <clears throat> Here is the fundamental flaw. Majority of people nowadays who are going to the gym are training in a method that is supposed to be used in the buildup to an event. Now, we've just had the Winter Olympics, right? Just finished. Mm -hmm. These Olympians, and, and I know I've trained Olympians before and world I know, champions. I know, yeah, you work with that them, kind right? of jazz, right? Yeah. We've done yeah. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. These training blocks are specifically designed to be um, leading up to an event, sorry. After the so event, are you saying like, what, but, but here's the thing, right? Not all training is leading up to an event. No, 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 no. They're designed for it, right? If you're doing, if you're in the gym and you're doing push, pull legs, right? So push yep. day, pull day, legs day, right? Yep, and you're, yep. and you're trying to build big, heavy muscle mass. Yep. Those things are a, are a block of training to build strength so that you go onto another block of training where you okay. will build in, build in something else for your event and then another block and then the event happens and then you dial back, right? And then you stop and you change something else. But that's not what the average person does. The average person doesn't. He, so what you're saying is, is they go and they train like this. They don't really know that they're training like this. They just think they're, their goal is to put on muscle. And so they train in that fashion, doing more harm than good. Absolutely. There's no event coming. Right. And all of those but, 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 well, right, but isn't there, isn't there benefits? Isn't there benefits to having more lean tissue on your body? Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Cause I'm, cause I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get on this page with you. I'm trying to get on this page with you. And I know the listeners are going to try to get on this page with you because of the, of the level of trust they have for you and I, right? So in my mind, right, I'm strength training. I'm running some sprints. I'm building my cardiovascular health. I'm building my muscles. This is good for longevity. And you're saying that it's actually detrimental. You see your training program you're doing currently. Yeah, whatever it is, I don't know what it is, but let's say whatever it is you're doing currently, do you think you'll be able to you be able to do that when you're 95 years old? Um, I'm hoping some form of it. Obviously, not yeah, with the that same. That wasn't the question. Yeah, wasn't the question. Damn you! <laughs> Can you do what you're doing now at 95? Well, the way that I feel I'm going to be at 95, I want to say yes. I want to manifest. I want to manifest this, huh? I know what you want to say, but you're avoiding the, the, the true answer because you know it's going to put you in a bad situation. Yes, you're true. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So at 95, it's more than likely unless there's some. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying. To... <laughs> Man up Morelli. That's what we're going to call the we're going to call the podcast Man up Morelli because okay. always tries to avoid the question. Yeah. So no, at 95 and at, at 95. No, no, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so fundamentally, what does that tell us? It tells us that you can't do it at 95 because what you're doing is creating damage that your body needs to adapt to and build from, right? It has to repair itself. But if you're causing the amount of damage that you cannot do at an older age, it means it's too much for your body to cope with. Because if it wasn't, you would be able to do it at 95. So let me give you some examples, right? You want to do four sets of 10 back squat with, I don't know, 400 pounds, right? So you're going, right, let's go big. And all you're doing is putting huge amounts of stress through every part of your body. And it will, without a shadow of a doubt, build strength. It will build muscle mass. But also put a lot of strain throughout all of your joints, your hips, your back, your knees, and all the other um, areas that you're going to, you know, with a bar that heavy on your back, you're going to cause some detriment. But you will build this muscle or strength. 
-hmm. The question is, how much muscle and strength do you need to live as long as possible? And, and when we think about, can you be doing this when you're 95? We go, well, I won't be able to, because by then my body would have broken down so much and not been able to repair that uh -huh. it actually have pushed me back. Okay. So, yep. and, and this is just my opinion. And I'm sure. For sure. Get and so, for it. yeah. But yeah. And so, let me as give you're you the saying opposite. This. Let me okay, give you the okay. opposite. Yep. So I'm a great fan of weight training. Did it for years. Right? Yeah. I haven't touched yeah. the weight in about a year. I haven't picked up a weight in about a year. Like, but, like not even, not even bicep curls, like nothing. No, no. Really? Right? But what that, is shock, that is, that is shocking to me. Cause I know, because, because here's the thing is, is I know how much you loved your CrossFit. Like when you were here a few years ago, we did CrossFit together. You were doing CrossFit actively. You were, I mean, all you, you were excited about it. That was part of your, part of your day. Yeah, well, in actual fact, but, um, and we can talk about that particular thing in, 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 in detail, but um, for the Open that year, I think I came top 40 in the country for my age group. And, right. and, and no, that's a lie, actually. I came, I think, top 60. I was in the top 30 before the last workout, and I, and I messed it up. But anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, I was pretty good level at that stuff. The majority of CrossFitters are broken, right? Because uh, yeah. power comes through your shoulders and your hips. It has to go through those areas. There's nowhere else. If you're, right. trying, to, if you're trying to produce power anywhere, it has to come through those two areas, hips and shoulders. And therefore, yes. if they're taking a lot of repetitive strain all the time, something is going to break, right? And, and when you're pushing yourself to that level of fitness, it's not normal and it's certainly not needed. But right? you're becoming very elite fitness level, but it's at the detriment of some real like day-to-day -day movement, like my shoulders hurt, my knees hurt, my back hurts, all yep. the rest of it. Yep. But... So no, I've done no weight training for that, that period of time because I came to the conclusion that, you know what, this stuff isn't going to help. It's not going to serve me long term. What can I do when I'm 90, 95, 100? What, what, what things can I still be doing? And so now, and I still, you know, I train four or five days a week for an you know, hour, hour and a half, whatever it is. But it's all um, gymnastic rings and body weight training. So, you know, I'm still doing pull-ups on the rings. I'm still doing dips on rings. I'm still doing rows. I can still do a lot of um, uh, core work on rings, you know, hanging upside down and sure, rotating forward sure. and back and all that kind of stuff, yep. which I can do at any age because well, what about about, cardio, what, what about cardiovascular stuff? Cardiovascular work, sprints, rowing, any of that? Don't, I don't do any of that. And alongside that, I do uh, well. I've got a trainer that I see three days a week, who's a really good friend of mine, known him for years. And we do MMA, but we do um, striking more than anything else. So I'm not rolling so much. I'm not doing huge amounts of injurious things. There's a lot of there's a lot of shadow boxing. There's a but lot you're working of, the heart in the lungs. Oh, um, I mean, yeah. let me tell you, right? If you wanna yeah. if you wanna work out that is non impactive. Okay, so there's no impact in any of your joints. If you want to be strong in your core, good in your balance, work your back, your legs, your shoulders, and everything else, do 20 minutes of shadow boxing a day. Mm -hmm. There's no impact. I used to do I I yeah, I used to I used to train a little bit. So I, I know, I know what you mean. I have a I have a question before you go any further though. I have a question that's really important. Go ahead. Keep go that ahead. in your mind. Yeah, Keep yeah. it in go your ahead. mind, right? Yeah. And yep. here's what I want to really make a, a a point about is I mean, there's lots of activities you don't have to do just shadow boxing, right? But majority of well not a majority, but there's a there's a high amount of people that we know as they get older suffer from falls, right? They fall, break a hip. And then it's a, they're never the same. Okay, so and we see it a lot. Right, as they get older, seventies, eighties, they trip, break a hip, and then they there's a, like a declination after that that they're never mm -hmm. well again, and it just it just worse and worse. And a lot yep. of people, that's the beginning of the end for them. Mm -hmm. And and the reason they trip and fall is because they don't have balance, they don't have core strength, they don't have movement that they can be quick with, because they've never really done it. Mm -hmm. And 
if you're doing that kind of uh, exercise activity right on a regular basis then you're always going to have that core strength that ability to stop yourself you're going to be flexible and mobile in a way that hasn't caused you detriment in the past okay one of the well, another really easy way to do it when you put your socks on every day stand up and put them on you stand up you used to go on one leg you put one sock on Right. And then if you really want to do it, you pull your knee into your chest. So you're you're standing with your knee pulled into your chest. And then you put that down under control. You don't just drop it. And then you do it on the other side. Is that how you put your I just is that how you is that how you put your socks on every day? Oh, all right. I'm gonna start doing that. I must be pumped. Yeah. Because so it's easy to do, great. But let's make sure it's always easy to do. So good. So good. That is such a good little tip there. And what are the things that are going to prevent you from being able to do that? Hip mobility, right? You can't get your foot up. Overweight, right? Because you you've got your bellies in the way and you can't get there. Um, balance, core strength, glute activation, because when you're standing on one leg, you have to... There's all these stupid little things that all come into play just to stand on one leg and be able to put your sock on and then... That's good awareness. Yeah, so good awareness on so, that. So yeah. just good habits that don't cause yeah. you problems are obviously very important. So I got, I got two things to share. Can you? Yeah. So the, the first question is, is um, what information did you get or what changed? You know, you're talking about someone who's trained their entire life. Now, all of a sudden at 52 or 53, you stop with the weights. What changed and why did it take you so long to figure it out? Yeah. Brilliant. Because, well, I, it, it took me so long to figure it out because I was so driven by the egotistical side of how you look. Okay. Wow. And, and um, you want to look good. Yeah, we way. all do. Heavy because way. when you look good, you feel good. By default, you feel good if you look good. Yeah. Unless you've got a shoulder injury or your back hurts or your knees bust. Yeah. Right? But, but, sh- but uh, uh, heavy weight training or weight training and bodybuilding routines will give you a look that is uh, in in the modern world impressive or attractive. Okay, so yeah. you have big shoulders, wide back, thin waist, big arms, good legs, all the rest of it. That's not a natural way for most people to be. And the reason the body becomes like that is because you've very purposefully made it that way over a long mm-hmm. period of time. Right? You can't go in for a couple of months and all of a sudden come out jacked. So you have got to do work. And I found that, you know, over many, many decades and trying lots of different things, um, one, you get bored, but two, a lot of it becomes much more difficult as you get older. Mm-hmm. And so you think, so, okay, I'll push this and I'll do it. I just, I don't really like doing the squats and, you know, bench. Well, okay, so I'm benching that much again, or I'm doing that, you know, these flies or this pull-ups or whatever it is, I'm putting the weight on and it's great, but oh, just bored, not getting anything mm-hmm. out of it. And then you feel as though, do I really want to keep doing this stuff? And is the gym where I want to live? Or mm-hmm. you know, do I want to keep coming back here all the time? Because there's a lot of people in there that aren't looking that happy and aren't looking that enthused with life. Yeah, or even that, yeah, yeah. But we get into a lot of different areas, right? Why do you go to the gym? Oh, it's my social life. A lot of people say that, it's my social life. Go, okay, what are you doing in the gym if it's your social life? You're not training. Because if the gym's there to train, get your stuff done, get out. Right. If you're like a social life, go and do an activity that is social. Right. You hear a lot, of, a lot of old people, right? And I'm going to class myself as nearly a pensioner, but elderly, <laughs> and I'm serious, right? Another, uh, but the people that are listening, you got to go to YouTube. Like, you got to go to the Really Fit YouTube because we're posting this there. You got to see who I'm talking to. If you don't know who Paul Burgess is, you say that, but mate, but mate, you don't, you don't even, you don't come close to to your age. I, no, and and that's because I'm really focused on not being my age but right. here's the thing a lot of elderly people you know so what activities you do oh i love dancing we go to this club and we all meet up and it's great and we 
dance to the music and it's it's fun and we, we used to do it as kids and now we can do it again. And it's all social, social, social stuff. You don't have to be in a gym to be social, right? Mm-hmm. You can get it in lots of different activities. But when people only go there because they don't know any better and they think it's going to give them this imaginary thing that is going to make them happy at some point, go back to episode three or whatever it was, um, and they never get there, they repeat these very long training protocols that were never meant to be used for long periods of time, and they become detrimental, right? It does break your body down more. It does cause injury. It does cause longer-term problems with um, just mobility in a lot of time because you become so tight in your hips and your back and your legs and your hamstrings and things. And so what changed it for me, which was the question, sorry, was I got to this point where I just thought, I don't want to do this anymore. There's got to be a better, more, more functional way for me to work that allows me to enjoy it more. Okay. And so for me, in my 30s, I did MMA when, before it really got mainstream and I did some fights and whatnot and trained and everything else. And what I wanted to do, I'll tell you what it was. <clears throat> I watched a film with, a, with an actor called Frank Grillo who is uh, my age and is shredded, right? And I went, well, what does he do? Because he looks impressive. So I looked him up, he follows a paleo diet and he does a lot of boxing training. I was great, okay. And he's done it from a very young age. And metabolically, he's always been very lean and he looks good, brilliant. And I thought, oh, actually, I can, go back into, I can go back into the old boxing, MMA kind of mm-hmm. stuff and I quite fancy that. And um, YouTube, 20 minute boxing workout let's go put it on bang 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 20 minutes later i'm dripping i'm sweating i've loved it it's been great the music's been banging i was like yeah i could do this every day (laughs) well maybe not every day but you could certainly do it quite often right right and so it was it was then that i just thought started thinking well from a cardiovascular perspective i would choose doing that over sprints on the assault bike any day of the week Right? And I've got an assault bike at the end of my garden and I've got a gym and I've got weights, which are gathering dust and all that kind of stuff. And what gets used if I ever go there is the TRX body weight stuff, right? Which is yep. really easy yep. to use. Again, that's another great thing that you can use. Yep. And at 95, you could easily use it. Um, and then I use something else, which I'll talk about in a second. But but it, I started doing that and then I rang the guy I knew who was a trainer and I want to come down and start training with you again. And he said, yeah, come, started doing some sessions. He's got the gymnastic rings there. We started doing a bit of that work. And just the two together, the little bit of the boxing and the mobility work, that that moving, the core work, the balance, and the strength work on the rings just ticked all the boxes. Yeah, you're starting to change my perspective. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No no injuries, right? Great fun. And just made me feel... And, and he said to me the other week, he went, you're not doing any weight training, are you? And I said, I haven't touched weight like a year. He goes, no, 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 because you're here three days a week. He knows, obviously, I'll go there three days a week. And then when I'm at home for two days a week, I won't train at all. And for the other two days, I will do some shadow boxing, which I'll come to in a second because it's something I found which I think is amazing. Yeah, I want to leave. I definitely want to leave the listeners with, you know, sort of, you know, some sort of action plan if they if they want to follow something. Yeah. I have a really a really quick question though. You want me to you want me to wait or you want me to ask it now? No, so so basically he said to me, because it, he said to me, you're not doing any weight training. I said no. He said, because it looks like you're putting size on again. And and the the you try doing dips on rings and pull-ups on rings and all that kind oh, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. You do. It uses that muscle group, but in a safe way. And so that's what changed my opinion on things. And the more yep. I did it, the less injuries I had, the more mobile I, I became, and the more fun I had with it. Mobility is huge. Yeah, no, mobility is huge. It's definitely something that I, you know, I get up and I go through a, a stretching routine. In fact, inside my, my challenge group, inside the Discord, I had a mobility and uh, corrective exercise specialist on there yesterday talking to, the, talking to us about the importance of it. So the couple of questions that I have as I listen to you, I think first and foremost, do you have any regrets that you trained as hard as you did for as long as you did? 
Do you think that's going to come back to haunt you? Um, I well, it's, it, I always answer a question like this. when everyone says, "Do you have any regrets on such and such?" I always answer it the same way, and it is, I don't have regrets because it came. It made me come to the realization of what I am thinking now. Okay. If, had enough. I not have done that, I mm-hmm. wouldn't have come to the realization that I feel is better than the thing I was doing. Right. And maybe you weren't, maybe you wouldn't be exercising at all right now if you didn't, right? Yeah. Maybe you could be really broken, yep. right? And then right. The, the second part of your question was, do you think it, it, it long term it has been detrimental? Um, <clears throat> I think if I continued to do it, mm-hmm. there would be bigger problems that would come. Yeah. So for sure, there were some bicep attachment issues that I had for niggling for quite a while, definitely some shoulder stuff, uh, knee and hip things that definitely caused me some problems. And had I just continued and ignoring that stuff, even though I did a lot of rehab and work with them and trying to get around the injuries, I think over time it would have just got worse and worse. And that comes back to our original question, can you do it when you're 95? Sure. sure. Because if you can't, it's just showing that your body is not, getting value from it it's becoming broken by it yeah and so i so i don't regret it but at the same time yeah there's a whole there's a lot of different aspects to this right from a mental health perspective it's all about that ego about i want to look a certain way and all that kind of thing right and can i give that up because mm-hmm. i want to and do this other thing which is a much more sensible strategic way of being fit and well and healthy Sure. And then, you know, you look at some of the bar stars on YouTube. Some of those guys are absolutely shredded, and all they do is calisthenics. Right. Oh, for sure. I mean, calisthenics and body weight and gym. I mean, look at the gymnastics. I mean, they're, they got amazing bodies. You know, here's the, here's the thing that I want to share with you. Yeah, go ahead. What are you going to say? No, I was going to say, if, if you've ever done gymnastic rings and you've oh, even attempted the slightest thing that they do in the, in the Olympics. It's, it's hard. It's not even conceivable. You go like I know, you I know, I know. Hold yourself in those positions. Poof. The Iron Cross. These guys that are doing the Iron Cross. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. I'm like, what are you doing? But then that again is another level of things that are going to damage you. But you don't sure, need to sure. go that far. You can do the good basics on there. But go on. No, no. Full disclosure. I do not bang and clang like I once did. Um, I'm doing more body weight stuff, you know, red light therapy. I'm doing more, mo- more mobility, more stretching stuff. Um, I can't say that I haven't touched a weight. So doing some curls and some shoulder presses, but, but minimal compared to what I used to do. And as you were sharing that about 10 minutes ago, um, about the banging and clanging and the squat specifically, you're talking about the pressure that you put on your back, uh, on your, on your, uh, spine and your shoulders and how it brings you, you know, pushes you down all that weight. I do experience more than uh, in a long time, a little bit of lower back pain, a little bit of shoulder pain. I do. I do. And so as you're saying that, I'm like, gosh, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're right when it comes down to that. Cause now, right. I'm 40. I didn't five years ago. I didn't have the lower, the lower back pain that I do today. And I didn't have the shoulder pain that I, that I do today, five years ago. And so I hear you. And I'm listening. So now for the people that are listening right now, what can we give them? Like, can we give them, a, a, you know, some sort of program or some sort of activities, a, a certain amount of time that they should be doing these exercises to give them sort of a path forward to say, look, you need to exercise. We're not saying don't exercise. We're just saying be careful of the programming that you're using to exercise if you're not training for some specific event. Exactly. Right. So again, What's most important to you about your health? Right? Ask you that question and find out right. what is the most important thing. Because when you come to that, yeah. when you come to that understanding, you will realize that maybe doing um, heavy weight training, which can be detrimental, isn't part of the plan. Now, right. you can do resistance work, one hundred percent. Resistance work is vital for longevity and health. But resistance work can be a lot lighter than, you know, a 400 pound back squat for four sets of 10. It can be body weight to failure because that's all you really need. You know, you just need to get to failure. And so body weight training, you can use a TRX, 
Yeah. So you just said something really quickly that I want to make sure people heard. You said you can still train to failure. So is that still the goal when you're doing body weight training is training until <clears throat> not always. Here's the thing, right? You don't want to do it on every set. It's not necessary. Okay. And you want to do it to a point where you fit. You don't even have to go to real failure. You need to just go to a point where you know you've engaged and used that muscle, right? You're tired. Right. And it's like, I might do one more, but I'm good. Is yeah. that going to failure consistently that causes the problems and so you want to be able to do it in a way that says all right i've done you know i don't know x amount of straight leg raises or knee raises or you know whatever it is and i can really <laughs> feel that burning i'm i'm done i'm all right i don't need to do more than that <laughs> but using the like i say gymnastic rings or trx and that or body weight exercises on on bars you know pull-ups uh, dips and that kind of thing they're easy to find they're very cheap you can take it anywhere right if you've got a trx it even comes with a bag oh yeah hook it. You put it on a tree it has a door um uh adapter to hook it hook up to your door hook up your tree yep, yep wherever you are right mm -hmm. and, and it's the easiest lightest thing and you can do all the exercises that you need to do and get fit and strong and mobile on the back of it really simply yep. so for people that want to think about doing something different, firstly, change exercise to activity because it can be anything, right? So if you like hiking, go and have a hike. That's an activity. You want to make the hike more difficult, put a rucksack on, put some weight in it and, and push yourself a little bit harder, right? Okay. Okay. What are you going to do if you're doing a weighted backpack hike? You're going to get, muscle mass you're going to get muscle yep. stimulation because it's hard you're going to get yep. cardiovascular, cardiovascular you're going to get core yep. work you're going to get so, yep. you want so am i hearing you right by saying like choose exercise that that almost check all of those boxes in one no not necessarily but how good is it if it does check all of those boxes in one well that's what i'm asking you because i know the listeners because you're getting right your now the listeners your buck, right 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 now the listeners are saying okay cool i hear you change it from exercise to activity. I hear you more body weight stuff. I hear boxing. I hear hiking, right? I hear all of these things, but I think the listeners are probably like, how many reps, how many sets, how long should I be doing this body weight training? And so is there a general rule of thumb that we can give somebody who's listening to say, Hey, start here. So, okay. So let's, um, finish with the with, with what the activity would be okay and like we said it can be anything that you feel you're having fun with and that you enjoy doing and you want to continue doing whether it's boxing whether it's skating whether it's you know skiing if you love rowing surfing rowing. snowboarding right like surfing yeah. how hard is that stuff yeah uh, yeah, I'm not, yeah. What? yeah yeah for sure anything like that that activity that you can do it, even like in China, if you've ever been to the far, well, you won't because the flight's too long, but <laughs> you know me. I have been there and, and I remember getting up in Hong Kong at 6 a.m. and there are really elderly men and women in their 80s and probably a lot older doing Tai Chi in the morning. Uh -huh. And their, their mobility and their flexibility was insane. It put me absolutely to shame. And they were strong and they could like not touch their toes. This is a good, this is, you're driving a good point here. They, they, they can slap the floor, right? With straight yeah. legs, just slap it. I know some older Tai Chi instructors that are like incredible, incredible. I'm like, holy shit, you are flexible, mobile, you're strong. How do I get like that? Right. Well, guess what? <laughs> Maybe that's something to, to incorporate in things because also, and I'm not saying that you know you have to go and do tai chi because that might be a big stretch for someone who's doing push pull legs you know double split routines <laughs> yeah. five days a week stop and doing your and... banging and clanging and go to, go be a monk <laughs> no <laughs> right? but look at look at how well these people are in their just in their general but just in their general mentality and the spirituality and the calmness right amen Right, it all yeah. adds yeah, to yeah. this longevity thing. This was a this 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 Tai Chi, this analogy, this picture. I hope that the the listeners are 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 seeing it. If you don't know what Tai Chi is and you've never seen 
these these monks and these people do it, watch them because they are eloquent, they're intentional, they're on purpose, their mindset is sharp, and they are strong, and they're living a lot longer than most of us here in the U.S. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but I mean that's also dietary and lifestyle things as well. But also, but but Tai Chi, there's loads of them in the US that are doing it. You know, it's, it's yeah, very yeah. very popular around the world. Why is it so popular? Because it's rubbish? No, because it actually it's what people can do and not have to break themselves to get a result from it. Right? Remember yeah. that you have to break yourself to get a result from weight training and you know very intense hard blocks of training work mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i'm not saying you shouldn't go to the gym some people's lives they want to go to the gym they want to count their macros they're going to weigh their food they're going to carry it around in a tupperware box and they're going to be as happy as you like right and you're saying look if that's you and you're happy don't stop doing it enjoy it right okay right. so long as that's you easy. are happy as long as you're happy but here's the thing, right, is, is as I'm thinking about those people, they may be happy now, but are they setting themselves up for happy later? Well, this is a question they have to ask themselves. What's most important to you about your health? Right. But maybe, but here's, but here's the thing. But here's the thing. At 20, most important thing about my health is looking chiseled for the girls, right? Even at 25, even at 30, right? Now I'm 40, right? And... It has drastically changed. Now, I still want to look good at 40. I'm not sitting here saying, like, I don't want to look good, right? But it's not quite the same as when I was in my 20s and 30s where I was out trying to impress the girls. Yeah. But so we, we it's changed. Listen, yeah. it took me to my 50s. So don't, don't, you know, I totally get it. All yeah. I'm saying is this is my perspective now after all of that time and experience and mm -hmm. mistakes and whatever else it is. In my longevity now is key for me. You know, I've got yeah, a young same. daughter. That's all I think I want about. To see her I want to Listen, have a think yep. about it this way. If I want to see my daughter, my youngest, turn 30, which is not old, right? You're only really getting going in your 30s. And, and for us, we want to see our kids grow up, right? We want to see 100%, 100%. them be, what yeah. are they going to become, right? If I want to yep. see her 30th birthday, I will have to be 85 years old. Mm-hmm. So that's important. Such good awareness. Such that is, good. That is important for me to get there, right? Because yeah. I'm, I didn't bring her into this world to leave her and get on with things and without me seeing what happened. That's oh not my gosh. Yeah. Right? I, yeah. Yeah. I can relate. Mm -hmm. So I need to get to 85 minimum, right? So my goal needs to be 110, and then we'll see what the what the spillage is. But that's that's really important. So. I know I'm not going to be doing CrossFit at 85 years old. Doesn't mean there's not 85 year olds doing it. Right. What I'm saying is I'm not going to be one of them because I think there are better ways for me to be able to get really good cardiovascular health, good strength, good mobility, and keep well, right, from an injury perspective, and still be able to do this when I'm 85, 95, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And the things that the options we've got, things like Tai Chi, right? It's amazing um, martial art that people can do. You're not going to win in a pub fight by using Tai Chi. That's not the point of it. But we're talking about longevity and health and all the things that come with it. And again, social media marketing has really driven this whole thing about you've got to have a six pack. You've got to look amazing. You, you need this exercise oh, yeah. Um, yeah. machine or whatever else it is the gyms are full of people and the majority of them there are miserable honestly they're not happy with what's happening because you never achieve what you want from it because you can always be leaner you can always be bigger you can always be faster oh yeah absolutely it never ends but if the goal is i want to be mobile fit and feel amazing about myself that you can do straight away yeah. because you can implement that and then every time you go to the gym, you're looking forward to it. Every time you're doing it, it's something new and something about. Do you know what? I've, here's another thing, right? My warm up today, train this morning. My warm up today was table tennis. Table tennis. Table tennis, right? The guy there in his place. So where I train, it's a, um, it's, it's like a summer house really, but it's a it's a it's a wooden building in a in a garden. It's fully kitted out with um, MMA, with bags and um, mats and everything else. And you've got a table tennis table there. And we, we put it together, we put it up, and we have two or three games, a table tennis, 
you know, we're moving about, we're loosening up, we're warming up, everything else. It's great fun, right? Because why not? It's just an activity that I enjoy doing. Another day, mm-hmm. I might use battle ropes to warm up with. Yeah. But when I do battle ropes, I'll do it on one leg, one arm, right? And then the other leg, same arm. Then both uh, legs, uh-huh. same arm. And then change again. Because it's giving you all of those things that you want to do. I like how you're thinking. Yeah. You're thinking balance. You're thinking mobility. You're thinking longevity. Now, I, I have to take you back to this question as we as we finish up in the what next you know, four or five minutes. Do? Well, yeah, but but really quickly, like you said, we said at the beginning, well, you said it, I didn't say it. If anybody has problems with this episode, they got to talk to Paul because Paul is the one who came up with this. (laughs) I'm just kidding. So how, how, so you said, you said your training is shortening your life. So the people that are listening, right? Like how is, how is it actually, how is training actually shortening our life? That that's, that's what I want to come back to. So, So a lot of training is causing a lot of oxidative stress and it is causing a lot of problems from a, cardiovascular perspective because it's not building cardiovascular because people don't want to do that hard stuff a lot of the time right they want to get in the gym do the training do the bump yeah we want to yeah well, lots of chest yeah everybody's I, benching well, all the guys and are anyway. and, and, mm-hmm. and not everyone don't get me wrong girls are doing butt exercises and guys are doing chest exercises and and how many women have got lower back problems now because their glutes are overdeveloped and they've got tight hamstrings like if you're listening to this and you've got lower back problems and all you do is glute work that's why and it's not use, it's not useful for you long term, right? But that's not going to shorten your life having a big butt. But the point of the matter is your focus is it, is it, is it, was Kim Kardashian would be dead, right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but, but the fact is <laughs> the 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 longevity uh progress that you want will not come from doing those sort of exercises. And therefore it will have to change. Right. And if it doesn't shorten your life, but you end up with an injury that you can't really get over, it's certainly going to impact the quality of your life. Okay, fair enough. And, and you know, we're in a modern clickbait world at the moment. And so if that gets people to, to click on the show and go, right, well, I'm going to tell you, I train all the time and it's amazing and I love it. And I'm, it's the, you know, I, 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 you're talking rubbish. Go, cool, man, that's fine. I like the headline. I like the headline, your big ass is killing you. <laughs> well yeah but um the 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 the, but the point of the matter is what what are people going to do do an activity that you enjoy do it regularly do lots of different activities do something that just just tests you in lots of ways you know um rock climbing is an amazing one as well for sure but but let's 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 yeah let's give so so if we're talking about so for the average person right are we talking 30 minutes total are we talking an hour total? Because then what I want to do really quickly before we finish here is I want to break it down, right? So if you're going to do some resistance training, focus on TRX, focus on gymnastic stuff, focus on body weight stuff, then get your heart rate up by doing such and such. If we're going to give somebody an action plan here where they now want longevity because they've gotten to that age where that's what's most important, or they're just young and very smart and want to listen and get on the on the right page... What would we say? So are we saying 30 minutes of training? Are we saying an hour a day? What's a good rule of thumb? I know it's individualized and it's, and it's, and it's dependent on the person and their lifestyle. I get that. But let's just put together a framework here. If you want to do something over a week, say, because that's what kind of reason. Okay, fair enough. Let's, let's lay it out. Yep. Find five hours that you can dedicate to looking after yourself. Okay. Training. You're talking about, no, you're talking about activity. You're talking about activity. We're not calling it training anymore. We're calling it activity. So five hours of activity a week. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing that was important that I wanted to speak, speak to you about when you were talking about it. We want to find out how many sets they need to do, how long have they got to do it. And oh, you're going, yeah. But you're going straight back to that old perspective of, well, it, sure. what's the reps and sets and the time? That's what and I know. Stuff, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And what yeah. I'm saying is just do a few hours a week of activity. Now, when we had yep. lockdown in the UK, probably the same as the US, we were allowed, supposedly, to go out for an hour a day for exercise. And then, and all the gyms were closed, right? So people had to find other things to do. And now, fortunately, I've got a gym in the end of my garden, and so I was able to do that. But I'll tell you what I did a lot of. I did a lot of walking, half an hour in the morning, half an hour in the evening. Mm-hmm. And it was the weirdest thing because I'd never done that much walking before. And actually some of it, it became 
a bit repetitive and it wasn't as fun as I, you know, it wasn't a stroll you were, you were, you were putting some effort in. But actually, from a metabolic perspective, it was doing me the world of good. It was really helping with burning off body fat and keeping me mobile and, and doing things non-impactively, right? Mm-hmm. And so when um, we come out of lockdown, one of the things I didn't do so much was walking because I had these other things I could do and I wanted to go places and do whatever else. But I realized that it doesn't really matter what it was as long as it was activity. Mm-hmm. And so you might want to go, right, I'm going to go paddle boarding, right, for an hour a week because I want to do it. It's great for, again, stability, core work, muscle work, everything else. Or it, like you said, I might want to go for a hike or I might want to go and do Tai Chi or I might want to do a mm-hmm. class that does some other thing. It's just an activity that I want to do. Mm-hmm. How long should you do it for? You know, do 45 minutes, an hour, get out of breath. That's great. Push your heart rate a little bit, get a sweat. Why not? If you want to do that, then do it. Right. But make sure that it's stuff that you want to do because when it is something you want to do, I know where you're going with this. Yeah. You'll find the time. You do it. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I love playing basketball. I, you know, when I'm going to be moving back to Florida with my brother. He plays basketball. I know I'm going to play basketball and that's going to be amazing. One of the things I started doing about six months ago, bought myself a basketball. We've got courts not far from where I live. And during the yep. day, that during the day, during the week, they're empty because all the kids are at school. Yeah. Well, I'm available. So I can go and do 20 <laughs> minutes. And I started doing it as yeah. um, as part of my cardio. I want to do something different. I don't want to get on that bike anymore and, you know, do the assault bike and, and come out of that. I want to do something more enjoyable. And I would go and do half an hour on the court <laughs> on my own. No one else there. Shoot some, shoot some hoops. Dribble back to the other one, shoot again, dribble back to the other one. Five minutes in, I'm gassed. Right? Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, I need to, I need to pace this stuff. Mm-hmm. But what are you doing? What are you doing in that activity? Right? You're doing your cardiovascular work. Great. Ever done a jump shot? Jump shot, right? Yeah. Working your calves, working your calves, working your legs, and then your shoulders, bringing the ball up, shooting, right? Balance, core. Exactly. I, I, I love it. Yep. Yep, I love it. So, but that stuff you can do when you're 95 years old because you're still moving around, you're still dribbling, you're still able to shoot and everything else. You might not want to jump so high, but I can tell you if you're not doing, if you're not doing it like Shaq, where you're, you've done thousands and thousands and thousands of jumps and your knees and your ankles are shot, if you're just doing it on a recreational level that it's just fun and it's just activity, you'll be able to do that forever and a day because mm-hmm. you're not being repetitive with it because mm-hmm. you're not doing it again tomorrow for 10 hours. You're doing something else. Okay. And all I'm saying in this whole this whole thing is do the stuff you love to do. Here's the thing I was going to say, sorry. A round of golf, a quick round of golf or a slow round of golf takes four hours. Right? There's no, no difference. You've heard the term golf widow, right? Because what is it? What is it? Golf, oh, golf, 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 widow. widow. Uh, I have not heard that before, but okay. okay. So there's a term yeah. called golf widow, right? And because the husband's out playing golf all the time. And so it's like, yep. well, I might as well not have a husband. You go and play a round of golf. It's going to take you, what, half an hour, an hour to get there, wait until it's your tee, tee off time, set up everything else, tee off, do your four hours, come off, maybe have a drink at the, at the clubhouse, get your stuff back in the car, drive home, it's quite an hour either side. That's a six hour time span. Yeah. Right? Yikes. I don't have time and, for that. And people are doing it three or four times a week. Yes. Especially here in Arizona. Why? Because they love it. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, I'm not saying that golf in and of itself is the greatest activity in the world, but it's a damn sight better than sitting on a PlayStation. Yes. Or, or, or just doing nothing. Mm-hmm. But it's six hours that they're voting three or four times a week. Mm-hmm. No wonder they never see their family or their wife, right? Because it's a very addictive game. That's what they want to do. Now, I'm not saying you should do that much, but find something that makes you compelled to do that. Can I tell you what I found recently that, that I've added into my routine, which is the most insane and effective thing I've ever used? I can't even remember how it happened, but basically I bought a VR headset 
you know, for um, a Facebook do. I want you to do so. The next, the next episode, I want you to wear your VR. I want you to wear your VR headset. <laughs> well, the trouble is, if I do that, I can't see you, right? But they say they, I'll tell you why I bought it because the guy I train with, his son, who he coaches, um, is a UFC, is a professional UFC fighter, and he had it, and he said, "Oh, it's amazing. You should try it." Right? Anyway, so I get it, and there's one particular. It basically, it's a game, right? It's gaming. I don't own a PS whatever they are or a PlayStation whatever right I don't I don't sit in front of the TV and play games but this virtual reality thing has a boxing game on there which is phenomenal because I can spend half an hour 45 minutes with different opponents obviously trying to hit me and I'm trying to move out the way and I'm trying to hit them yeah yep no impact right no no danger of any kind but just getting a really massive workout cardiovascular wise out of it and it's so much fun mm-hmm. and um the other morning <clears throat> what happened oh friday last week we had a storm here in the uk uh, a really bad one it was like 100 mile an hour winds and we had bits of fences have been torn off and trees are down and whatnot and i couldn't and basically the thing was don't drive anywhere because it's quite dangerous so i couldn't go to my training session so i used that and I did 50 minutes of it, like nearly an hour. And I was rinsed at the end. I want to see, I want I want you to record a video. I want to see this. I want to see you in your living room with this VR set. Kicking some ass. I will, I, will my, I will send you my missus doing it, right? Because I've got oh, that I on video. I'll, 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 I'll text it to you. <laughs> but the um, awesome. but 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 I'll tell you the reason I'm saying it is because it was just another activity that I look forward to doing, that I make time for, that I know I can get 20 minutes of that in and it'd be really effective and I'm not causing any long-term problems or doing anything else. And I know we've spoken a lot about boxing and and stuff today. It's not the only thing. Yeah, you like boxing. I guess the moral of the story is box. I, I'm actually, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to bring some shadow boxing into my life for sure. Cause I remember when I used to do it, and it is a great workout, especially like you put really light dumbbells in your hand, like one pounder or half a pounder. And now you you can't – when I used to do it, my coach said, don't drop your shoulders, right, for five minutes, right? Your shoulders are up. Now you're working your shoulders. You're out of breath. I, I am – you reminded me of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it's because it's an activity that I enjoy. Find one that you guys enjoy and do right. that. So the, So the moral of the story here as we wrap up is – let me just make sure I got this right. Three to five hours a week, find something that you enjoy that you're going to look forward to doing because that's also going to create something that's sustainable, right? And also build longevity through this process. Yeah, but also don't be afraid to not do the same thing every day. Right. Well, how many times oh, you good, swipe yeah. into the gym? Right. You know, I'm not being funny, but stop doing that. Do different right. things. You know, if yeah. today wants to be shadow boxing, do it. If tomorrow's going to be boarding, you know, um, uh, uh, paddle boarding, or the next day is going to be a hike, or it's going to be something else, do it. It's an all rounded activity because that's what we're built for. We are not built to make this chest press movement all the mm-hmm. time in the same in the same direction, right? Mm-hmm. And those are the things that are going to make you feel. It's so interesting because it's it's such it's such a contradiction to what you see on the web, right? Like chest day is monday leg day is friday and it's the same re- repetition you know sort of workouts the banging and the cleaning like you like you said it almost becomes habitual right And you don't really even think about what you're doing to your body swipe the card get to the squat machine swipe the card get to the chest to the chest press and you don't really think about the damage that you're doing to your body because you're really so fixated on how you're how you look yeah so, so think about this is the last thing i'll leave you with right Think about it this yep. way. If you're on social media and you're watching someone's feed or someone's page or whatever it is, and you see every day they're in the gym doing a different exercise in the gym, and then you look at somebody else's feed and every day they're doing a different, different activity, which is varied, more exciting, more fun. Whose life do you want more? Oh, wow. Okay. You don't want the gym guy. No, you want the, you, out living life and having fun. Yeah, yeah. You want an active lifestyle. I think the epitome, right? The, but but at the same time, 
I would say you want the active lifestyle, but you definitely want to look good. I don't think anyone wants to sacrifice how they look. That's the that's the thing. The only reason people are not looking good is because they're eating badly and yeah, they're sitting sure. on grass. Right. Right. Once you start moving, getting active, and eating well, the rest of it will take care of itself. And and so as we as we finish this, right, there's an episode that we did that was called Your Last Diet, where where Paul shared his three by five framework. Make sure you listen to that episode. Go back and listen to that episode because that's the nutrition that you need to follow as you're now implementing this active lifestyle that 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 Paul and I discussed over this podcast. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Paul. You're brilliant. You always bring some great information and some new fresh pers- uh, perspective. I am shocked that you're not doing CrossFit anymore, but that is uh, also very refreshing at the same time because you can't come on here and say uh, your training is shortening your life while you're doing the CrossFit that you used to do because I remember you worked out hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for those of you that are listening on Spotify, on iTunes, or your favorite podcasting platform, please leave us some comments, some feedbacks. Um, hit the like if you're on YouTube, share it. We want to get this message out as you can probably hear by now. It's a different perspective on getting healthy, staying healthy, and living a very long time. Thank you so much for listening, Paul. Thank you so much for always adding value. I love you, brother.